it's 2.30 in the morning, and perhaps you find yourself in a situation where sleep eludes you. You roll from one side to the other, pounding your pillow, but nothing seems to help. While everyone else rests peacefully, anxiety has its way with you. As 3.30 approaches and you still haven't slept, the weight of worry becomes palpable. You cover your head with a pillow feeling like crying. What a mess. What does all this anxiety mean? All this insecurity, trepidation, worry, restlessness. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, it means simply this. You are a human being. Before we delve further, know this. You're not stupid, emotionally underdeveloped, or immature. Your parents didn't fail you, and it doesn't mean you failed them. Importantly, it doesn't mean you're not a Christian. Even Christians battle anxiety. Jesus himself faced it in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night before his crucifixion. He prayed for the cup of suffering to be taken away with such ferocity that capillaries burst and rivulets of crimson rolled down his face. Jesus battled anxiety. He faced fears, but he fought through them, surrendering to God and fulfilling his mission. Anxiety did not win. Such is God's plan for you. Anxiety comes with life, but it doesn't have to dominate your life. God's plan for you is not a life drenched in anxiety. It is His. Well, that you and I learn to live lives characterized by calm, not chaos, by peace, not panic. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, God has sent me with a divine message for you this festive season. He wants you to stop worrying and leave the things you can't control to Him. So, open your souls and minds to receive His divine message today. Stay with me as we unite in prayer, calling on God to give us power over our battles. And if you're yet to subscribe, please take a moment to do so. Let us embark on this journey together, seeking God's peace amid life's uncertainties. May His grace be with us as we explore the path to a life characterized by calm, trusting in the divine plan. Amen. Have you ever felt nearly swamped in your life? Like you're still showing up, wearing a smile, but deep down nobody knows the weight that you carry behind that smile. The thoughts that consume you, making you feel like, some days, you just want to run away from it all. Today, I want to delve into something profound, something about the storms of anxiety that may be raging in your life. It's like facing powerful waves and relentless winds that threaten to overwhelm us. Because, my friends, the winds will blow. In these moments, there are fears, perhaps irrational fears, that make us feel nearly swamped. We're dealing with thoughts that may not make sense from the perspective of heaven. There are aspects causing us to shut down, paralyzing us senselessly. But here's the perspective shift I want to suggest. When you put it all in the context of who God is in you and what you mean to Him, everything changes. He says, I want you to train your heart to be anxious for nothing. Especially if you're earnestly following God's purpose, you've got no reason to ever be anxious. Be anxious for nothing. So, as we stand at the intersection of our worries and the divine plan, let's remember that God is with us in the midst of the storms. We're not alone, and there's a higher purpose guiding us through the winds and waves. Before we dive deeper into trusting God with our worries, let's talk about something we all grapple with. The limits of our control. Picture this. Life is like a complex puzzle, and sometimes the pieces just don't fit the way we want them to. It's crucial to admit that there are parts of life, situations, and outcomes that we can't fully steer. This isn't admitting defeat. It's acknowledging the reality of being human. In the scriptures, we find guidance on this very theme. 
Proverbs 19 verse 21 tells us, Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. This verse reveals the essence of recognizing the divine sovereignty that supersedes our human intentions. It urges us to acknowledge the truth that, despite our best laid plans, there exists a higher purpose that we may not fully comprehend. Now, in the book of Judges, we encounter the tale of Gideon, a man called by God to lead the Israelites against their oppressors. Gideon, however, was plagued by doubts and fears. In Judges 7, verse 2, the Lord says to Gideon, verse 2, the Lord says to Gideon, You have too many men. I cannot deliver Midian into their hands, or Israel would boast against me, saying, My own strength has saved me. Here, God reveals his divine plan, teaching Gideon and us that true victory lies not in human might, but in surrendering control to God. As we reflect on Proverbs 19, verse 21, and the story of Gideon, we grasp the profound truth that life's uncertainties are often purposefully beyond our control. Accepting this reality becomes a crucial step in finding peace and alleviating unnecessary stress. It's not about relinquishing responsibility, but about acknowledging that, ultimately, we are co-creators with a divine architect who sees the entirety of the plan when we can only see a single threat. Now, as we stand at the crossroads of life's uncertainties, we arrive at a profound approach to coping with the uncontrollable, letting go, and placing our trust in a higher power, the creator of the heavens and earth, God. Picture it as releasing a handful of balloons into the sky, each balloon carrying a worry, a fear, or an uncertainty. It's the act of surrender, acknowledging that there's a force beyond ourselves guiding the course of our lives. Let's find wisdom and solace in Psalm 37 verses 5 and 6. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in Him, and He will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. This poetic verse invites us to entrust our path to the Lord, to lean on His understanding, and to witness His divine actions unfolding in our lives. Let's go deeper. Commit your way to the Lord. This is an invitation to surrender our plans, decisions, and paths to God. It emphasizes an intentional act of entrusting our lives to a higher power. The word commit implies more than a casual acknowledgement. It's about placing our trust wholeheartedly in God's hands. Trust in Him, and He will do this. Trust is the key component here. It's an active, ongoing reliance on God, acknowledging His sovereignty and wisdom in guiding our lives. The promise follows the act of trust. God will act. It reflects the reciprocity of the divine. Human relationship, where our trust triggers God's intervention. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. This part unveils the divine response to our trust and commitment. The metaphors of the dawn and noonday sun evoke images of brightness, clarity, and visibility. The righteous reward and vindication suggest that God's response involves not only a personal flourishing, but also a public affirmation of righteousness. Surrender and Trust Psalm 37 verses 5 to 6 encourages us to actively surrender our plans and trust in God. It's an acknowledgement that our ways may not always align with God's ways, and trusting Him leads to divine direction. Divine Timing The imagery of dawn and noonday sun implies a divine timeline. God's interventions may not always align with our expectations, but they are perfectly timed for our ultimate good. 
public witness. The promise of a shining righteous reward and vindication suggests that God's work in our lives isn't just personal, it becomes a witness to others. Our trust in God can be a testament to His faithfulness. In summary, Psalm 37, 5, 6 invites us into a dynamic relationship with God, one where we actively commit trust and await His transformative and visible work in our lives. It's an assurance that as we align ourselves with God's plan, our paths will be illuminated with righteousness and vindication, becoming a testament to the faithfulness of our divine guide. Now, let's journey into the story of Hannah found in 1 Samuel. Hannah faced the uncontrollable pain of infertility, a circumstance that brought her deep distress. In her desperation, she turned to God, pouring out her heart in prayer at the tabernacle. The beautiful part of this story is that Hannah didn't just present her request, she surrendered it. In 1 Samuel 1, verses 11, she vowed, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me, and not forget your servant, but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life. Hannah exemplifies the power of letting go, trusting God's plan even when the situation seems out of control. So, my friends, as we grapple with the challenges of life, let's embrace the liberating act of letting go and trusting in God. It's not about relinquishing responsibility, but about acknowledging that we're co-navigators with a divine guide. Friends, numerous passages encourage believers to cast their anxieties upon God, seeking solace and divine guidance. One such powerful verse can be found in the book of Philippians in chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Let's unpack the richness of these verses. Do not be anxious about anything. This is a direct and clear command. It's an invitation to release the grip of anxiety on our hearts and minds. The phrase about anything encompasses the breadth of our concerns, whether big or small. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, fear, a transformative approach is presented. Instead of allowing anxiety to dominate, we are encouraged to turn to God in every circumstance. The use of a prayer and petition implies a comprehensive communication with God, bringing both our general concerns and specific requests before Him. Additionally, the mention of Thanksgiving highlights the importance of gratitude even in challenging times. Present your requests to God. This is an active engagement with our faith. It encourages us to articulate our worries and desires to God, recognizing His role as a caring and attentive listener. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The promise that follows is profound. The peace that God offers is not a mere absence of trouble, but a transcendent peace that surpasses human comprehension. This peace acts as a sentinel, guarding our hearts and minds. It's not just a temporary relief. It's a transformative and enduring state of tranquility rooted in our connection with Christ. And so, what happens when we surrender our worries to God by prayer and petition with thanksgiving? Active trust. Philippians 4, 6, 7 invites us to actively trust God with our worries. The act of presenting our concerns through prayer is an exercise in faith acknowledging God's sovereignty. Thanksgiving in all circumstances. 
The inclusion of thanksgiving emphasizes the importance of cultivating a grateful heart, even amidst challenges. It shifts our focus from what's lacking to what we have in God, transcendent peace. The promise of a peace that transcends understanding is a powerful reassurance. It reminds us that God's peace goes beyond rational explanation and can be experienced even in the midst of chaos. Now that we've explored the profound biblical perspective on casting our anxieties upon God, let's delve into practical steps that we can integrate into our lives to actively implement this transformative idea. 1. Develop a regular prayer and meditation practice. Cultivate a habit of regular communication with God through prayer and meditation. Set aside dedicated moments in your day to connect with your faith. Express your concerns and seek divine guidance. Psalm 145 verse 18 reminds us, The Lord is near to all who call on Him to all who call on Him in truth. 2. Practice gratitude for the present moment. Train your heart to appreciate the blessings of the present moment. Gratitude shifts our focus from what we lack to the abundance of what we have, fostering contentment and trusting contentment and trusting God's provision. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 encourages us to Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. In our lives, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 18 provides a guiding light, urging us to give thanks in all circumstances even when the path ahead seems challenging. This verse doesn't exempt us from difficulties, but invites us to approach every situation with a heart of gratitude. Why give thanks in all circumstances? Do God's will for you. The scripture emphasizes that giving thanks is not merely a suggestion, but a divine mandate. It aligns us with God's will for our lives. Acknowledging His sovereignty in all circumstances fosters an intimate connection with Him, deepening our understanding of His purpose for us in Christ Jesus, shifting our focus, Gratitude serves as a powerful lens through which we view our lives. It's easy to become fixated on what we lack or the challenges we face. However, a heart cultivated in gratitude shifts its focus from scarcity to abundance, recognizing the blessings present in every moment, fostering contentment. In a world that often pushes us toward constant striving, gratitude fosters contentment. It reminds us that, even in difficulties, we have a foundation of blessings to be thankful for. This contentment is not born from complacency, but from a deep trust in God's provision and plan. 3. Journal your prayers and blessings. Habakkuk 2 verse 2 says, Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. In the sacred act of prayer, God invites us to not only utter our words, but to also record the whispers of our hearts. Habakkuk 2 verse 2 serves as a divine encouragement to journal our prayers and blessings. Let's unravel the depth of this wisdom and its practical implications for our spiritual journey. Why journal our prayers and blessings? Divine Remembrance God, in His wisdom, knows the human heart's tendency to forget. Journaling becomes a sacred archive, a tangible record of the revelations, insights, and conversations with God. It transforms our prayers from fleeting moments into a lasting testament of our spiritual journey. Clarity and Revelation Writing down our prayers allows for clarity. Just as the Lord instructed Habakkuk to make it plain on tablets, journaling provides a clear canvas for our thoughts and feelings. This act 
can unveil hidden revelations and insights as we express ourselves in written form before God. A witness to God's faithfulness. Our journals become witnesses to God's faithfulness over time. In moments of doubt or challenge, flipping through the pages serves as a reminder of prayers answered, blessings received, and the unfolding of God's plan. It testifies to the continuity of His grace in our lives. So, set aside a dedicated time for prayer and reflection. During this time, pour out your heart to God, articulating your concerns, joys, and gratitude. Let the journal become a sacred space for authentic communication with the divine. Also, organize your journal entries by sections such as prayers of supplication, expressions of gratitude, and reflections on scripture. This structure helps create a comprehensive and organized record of your spiritual journey. Periodically, revisit your journal entries. This practice not only allows you to witness personal growth, but also helps you discern patterns in God's responses, reinforcing the understanding of His faithfulness. 4. Engage in mindful breathing and reflection. Life can be a bit of a whirlwind, right? But here's a simple idea for those times when things get a bit too much. Take a moment to just be still. You know, like a time out for your soul. Why be still? Imagine it's like pressing pause on the crazy remote control of life. Psalm 46 verse 10 commands us, Be still and know that I am God. Basically, it's an invite to slow down, catch your breath, and remember there's something bigger going on. When you take a moment to be still, it's not running away from stuff. It's more like giving your worries a little break. It's a chance to let go of all the buzzing thoughts and just be present, acknowledging that there's a kind of peaceful power surrounding you. And finally, establish a supportive community of faith. In the journey of life, we're not meant to walk alone. Ecclesiastes wisely puts it this way. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Life has its challenges and navigating them is a shared venture. This ancient wisdom reminds us that having companions on this journey is not just beneficial. It's essential. We're designed for community, for connection. Community gives you strength in unity. Just like a cord of three strands is not easily broken, there's strength in togetherness. Life's burdens become lighter when born collectively. It also brings shared experiences. Sharing your journey with others adds depth and richness to your experiences. Your victories are celebrated, and your challenges are faced with collective wisdom. You also get support in times of need. We all stumble at times. Having a community means there's someone there to lend a helping hand when you fall, someone to share the load. Incorporating these practical steps into our lives enables us to actively live out the principles of trusting God, expressing gratitude, and fostering a deeper connection with the divine. May these steps become transformative tools on our journey towards a life characterized by peace and faith in Christ Jesus. You know, surrendering control is kind of like a dance between faith and patience. It's realizing that God's plan might not always match up with our instant coffee kind of timelines. But you see, in that gap between what we want and when it happens, that's where faith and patience step in, hand in hand. Faith is a bit like your favorite song playing in the background. It's always there, guiding your steps. It's not just about believing. It's this active trust that God's got this grand plan, even if it seems like we're reading it one chapter at a time. Faith is understanding that what we see is just a snippet of the masterpiece being painted. Now, 
Let's talk patience. It's not just twiddling your thumbs waiting for something to happen. No, no. It's this Zen, like endurance, a calm assurance that God's timing is like a fine wine, takes time but so worth it. Patience is that friend who says, hang in there, the plot's thickening. Life throws curveballs, right? Embracing faith and patience is like having a reliable GPs for those unexpected detours. It's knowing that even when life takes a scenic route, God's still navigating. So, we roll with the punches, confident that every twist is part of a bigger story being written by a pretty awesome author. Take a breather. Reflect on the faithfulness you've seen. Shoot up a prayer surrendering your plans. Maybe throw in a favorite scripture for good measure and chat about it with your faith community. Life's a journey and embracing faith and patience. Well, that's like putting on your favorite playlist for the ride. Beloved, letting go of worry and leaving the things we can't control to God is a journey of faith and surrender. It's about acknowledging our limitations, practicing gratitude, and trusting in a higher power. Before you go, I want to invite you to a sacred moment of prayer. Let's affirm our faith together before we approach the Most High in prayer. Repeat these affirmations after me with unwavering faith. I affirm that God's plan for my life is perfect, even when I can't see the full picture. I affirm that patience is a virtue I embrace, trusting in the divine timing of my journey. I affirm that my faith is a guiding light, illuminating the path even in moments of uncertainty. I affirm that as I surrender control, I make space for God's miraculous interventions in my life. I affirm that I am not alone on this journey. A supportive community surrounds me, and together we walk in faith and patience. In this moment of affirmation, let these words resonate in your heart as we lift our collective faith before the one who holds the universe in his hands. Dear Heavenly Father, As we stand in this sacred moment, our hearts overflow with gratitude. We thank you for the promises you've woven into the fabric of our lives. The promises that assure us that, in the areas where our control falters, yours prevails. Thank you for the gift of faith, a steadfast anchor in the ebb and flow of life. We are grateful for the patience you instill within us, a virtue that allows us to wait with hope and endurance. Lord, we acknowledge that your plan surpasses our understanding, and we are grateful for the assurance that it is perfect. In moments of uncertainty, we find solace in your promises. We express our thanks for the supportive community you've placed in our lives. Together, we navigate the journey of faith and patience leaning on one another and lifting each other up. In this prayer, we release our anxieties, surrendering them at your feet. We trust in your divine control, knowing that your promises are true and unwavering. Thank you, Lord, for being the author of our faith, the one who guides us through the chapters of life. May our hearts resonate with these words of gratitude, and may our journey be a testament to your grace and faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
As we conclude our time together, I hope these reflections on faith and patience resonate with you. Before we part ways, I want to leave you with an invitation. If you're ready to surrender all your worries, big or small, to God, type amen in the comments below. Remember, you are not alone on this journey. Our faith community is here for you, ready to stand with you in prayer. If you have specific prayer requests, feel free to share them in the comments or reach out to us via email. Your concerns matter, and we believe in the power of collective prayer. May the embrace of faith and patience guide you through life's uncertainties. Remember, you're part of a community that cares, and together we navigate the path of surrender and trust until we meet again, may your journey be filled with the peace that surpasses understanding. Amen.